Dave. Nice to see you, Dave. I'm Dave. Hey, Dave, what's going on? <laughs> Dave, Dave's not here, man. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Signs of papers, old man. I guess we had to grow up in our era to, to, to really know who Cheech and Chong is and appreciate it, right? That was the best. That's all that they used it, to be it, the it, only good comedy out there. It was side splitting <laughs> humor back in the day when I was a sophomore in high school. That's for sure. I used to that in port. I used to be able to quote, 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 quote the whole thing. I used to memorize, I memorized the entire album. Why can you not sign the papers, old man? Yes. <laughs> I could not sign the papers. You have broken my fingers. Yes. <laughs> oh, my eye. Anyway, so, oh, well, I'm having a, uh, I'm regressing. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so I, um, yeah, that and Porky's. You remember seeing Porky's in the movies? Did you see Porky's in the movies theater? I did. I was never a big Porky's fan, though. Really? I I I thought I laughed so hard when I was 15 that my side hurt. I really thought that was funny. Now, as a near 60-year-old man, and I'm a Christian, it's <laughs> it's off it's off putting, yeah. you know? But I thought it was funny back then. Um, but anyway, so that's that. So uh, I'm David Beverly. I I worked at NASA for 12 years, and uh, but I guess you could say my claim to fame at, at Goddard Space Flight Center, which gave me a little bit of notoriety, is I did the first webcast from the North Pole in 1999. All right. So wait, I have a million questions. Can I ask you questions? Yeah, but, or you want to roll for a little? Know, a million is great, but you don't have a bazillion questions. You're just a million, huh? Just a million. I'm just I just kidding me. Anyway. Twelve years at NASA. What did you do? Did you watch rockets launch? What? 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 I did. So, yeah. did they launch rockets? Absolutely. I I was launch support at at a couple of uh uh, you know we we have launch facilities. Well, there's Cape Canaveral. There's Kennedy Space Center. I'm talking about American launch facilities, and then we have launch facilities out in Vandenberg Air Force Base at Lompoc. You know where the the flower capital of California out there. Where were you based? I was at Goddard Space Flight Center, and so right. I would go down to Kennedy. I was at, uh, there was a, was that a shuttle launch? I think it was a shuttle launch. We did, I was there for the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope. You ever heard of Chandra X-ray Space Telescope? Sounds familiar. Anyway. But I, yeah, I, it was, I have yeah. a lot of questions. Cool. So were there people on those rockets? Well, uh, on the sh it's really interesting, man. There's a lot of um, proud old mothers. Uh, it's really fun to be at a launch event. And, and, and this is part of the reason why everyone buys into it that's there. Um, maybe I should back up a hair. Everyone says that NASA is deceiving. What I would put to you and, and anyone listening is that the NASA is a mind soak. That if you're an Arctic sea scientist, where are you going to get a job, right? At NASA. If you're a rocket scientist, where would you go to, where's the epitome of, of employment? NASA. It's a mind soak. And the people that are there are wonderful, thoughtful people. They don't know that they're deceived. They are deceived. So back to my question, is anybody, sure. is anybody on the rockets? I say no, yes. but you work there. So yeah. how do I you work know? There, yeah. How do you know they're on the rockets? Well, okay, I don't know. No, all I know is that there were men there. They went up in a a a uh, what do you call it? A structure? Uh, uh, what the what's the launch tower? Whatever. Me. Yeah, it's not called that. But uh, anyway, um, so basically, at Kennedy. Um, People went up into the at the launch facility. Went up in a tower, climbed and board aboard the the shuttle. And and you don't the think there's any way that they could just trick you and slip them out of there? Of course, of course, that. Of course, of course there, there is. is. So yes, so, of course, yeah. So because you were there, doesn't mean yeah. that anybody was on the rocket. Now you believe people on the rocket, but do you have any hard evidence? Because well, I don't well, believe well, me, rockets that up. size can 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 actually fly. Uh, okay, let me let me let me restate. I believed they were there. 
Okay. When I was there working there, I believed that they were there. So now I you also don't believe it. No, no. Listen, I believed back then that the Earth was a spinning globe in the vacuum of space. I believed back then, just like everyone else believed it back then, right? Right. Especially there. And and that's the, my point I'm trying to make is that there's a hype. There's a there's this spiritual energy, Dave, that that causes people to get swept up in it your heart swells and you and it's this feel good energy if you've been if you've ever been at a launch it's it's, in, it's sounds like a party I would sounds say. like a, it sounds like well, a party it's almost like a party yes and it's and everyone's so excited and and all of this and, and having been there okay and so you don't know that you're being deceived you i agree with also, that i i say 90 90- Nine percent of the people at NASA yeah. don't know they're being deceived. Yeah. I can I I all of my rocket scientist friends and astrophysicist friends are offended oh. by what I'm saying. Of course. Well, you were at a shuttle, a shuttle launch, I assume, right? At least one, and I was at a lot of probe right. launches. And yeah. how far away were you from the shuttle when it launched? Oh, you can't be anywhere near it. So 10 miles? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's isn't it like ten miles? It's yes, far. Ten, you can ten see miles. It you can barely yeah. see. It. You wait, can wait, wait, wait. It. No, no, no. You can see it well from the grandstands at at the at Kennedy. You can actually see it clearly. But here's here's the funny thing. Well, at ten miles, shouldn't it be beyond the other side of the curve? Sixty six feet of it should be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. of course you do. So um, yeah, you can see it. Um, and uh, particularly the moment the device leaves the launch pad, um, even during the day, the the fireball coming out of the bottom of that thing is intense. So, it's um, a it, to me, it's a fireworks show and it's a balloon. Yeah, well, I don't know that it's a balloon. So, it, it's a so large... you've seen the external tank, right? Absolutely. And when it was upright. On the launch pad, you never got within hundred yards of no it. No way. No one comes within it. No right? one yeah. comes because right. it's a balloon, and nobody can <laughs> find that out. So, well, it here, very may well be. So yeah. here, here is the balloon external tank yeah. falling back to Earth. Now, this is NASA, right? Right. So, so guess who's filming it? The guys on the shuttle. Where's the shuttle going? It's going up at 17,000 yeah. plus miles an hour. Supposedly, that's what we're told, yes. A- a- yeah, and yeah. and the, yeah. the external tank is falling and it weighs 20,000 pounds. Right. Okay. You know, the, and this is it falling. Now, right. let me ask you a question. Using your God-given common sense, Macy's yes. Day Parade balloon or 20,000 pounds of steel falling towards Earth? Well, we have to consider the distance that it's at for starters, Dave. So, 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 so the, the official, watch, watch right here. Watch yeah. right here. See that paper that just went by? Did you see that? Uh, no, it wasn't paper. What was that? But I'm not just, listen. What, it's what, not wait, paper. What, uh, what, what was this? Watch. Wait, right here. Watch wait that, that right, right there. There. Yeah. Okay. So, according to what they say, Okay, because again, I did. I never put the the fueling systems into these systems, right? Yep. Is that it's liquid oxygen that is that is frozen at that height? It's it's very. Where did cold, it come from? It came right? from in front of it. It didn't yeah. come from it. Oh, so there's a whole lot of debris. There's a whole lot of debris. But so, I'm I'm seeing more of it even. Yeah, yeah. But there, this a few other thing, part, oh, there's more right there, right? So yeah, this see, is. Yeah. This is a steel tank free falling being filmed out of a window of something that's heading towards space at a speed that we can't comprehend. So we all this know is that, what they tell us. This yeah. is what they tell yeah. us. So <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> clearly not a steel tank. Clearly it's sure. floating. Clearly it's a balloon. It's a blimp. And then you've seen the recovery vehicle Maybe. that tried to grab it. Right. Have you seen sure. that video? The, the cloak, recovery vehicle there was they a, try to grab it? Yeah, there is a cloaked vehicle. Let me see if I can, let me see if it's this video. All right. And it a cloaked shows, vehicle. Yeah, watch this. This if you haven't seen this, this will this will shock you. Right. Um right. 
Is it there? A shuttle. Um, maybe, oh, maybe it's the first one. Hold on. Yeah. It is. Oh, here it is. Recovery. Boom. So, so here it is. Right. All right. So, okay. And then we watch, watch right over here. Okay. It's going to show you in a second. Ready? Right side. Yeah. Three, two, one. There it comes. There it, there it goes. I'll, See, I'll that's, that's all. Go back again. That's I, fascinating. I mean, contrast. Yeah. Slow it down. Looks like a quadcopter of some sort. It does. Yep. Okay. I'm going to slow it down more and change the contrast a little more. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to rotate a little bit. So now we got the balloon floating here. I see it. Yeah. And what the hell is this? Yeah. Fascinating. Contrast boost. Contrast boosted. Yeah. Okay. Wait. And there it is. Ooh. Nice. All right. So fascinating. So if that was yeah. a steel tank, it right. this would be useless. It would because it would just fall. So right. this is a balloon. This has something to do with the balloon. There's nobody on the rocket ships ever. That's sure. my that's my claim. Prove me oh, wrong. Oh yeah. Right, right. Well, especially now today, Dave, since they, they don't have any manned missions, right? Yeah. Well, they well, supposedly we, the Russians, four people the Russians fly, now. They're going to yeah. fly four listen, people around the moon supposedly later this year. Well, listen, no one's ever touched the moon. The, the moon isn't even in my belief. The moon is in the in the firmament and the rakia. I agree. So the moon is probably not even a solid object that's within our realm. It's it it is it 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 is perceived the way it is, but it's not what it is what we see. Okay? I it's agree. Like I I think up. I think that the the yeah. moon, the source right. of the moon is in the firmament, and the moon right. that we see is a projection of its light, for lack of sure. a better word, into yeah. our azimuthal yeah. grid of vision. Yeah, it's it's it presents itself in this realm yes. in the manner that we see it. The same way the stars do. The stars, according to scripture, are an, a form of angelic host, and so oh. they are luminaries, and so... According to the scripture, you know, in the revelation, it says the sky rolls back and the stars fall to earth. So that's a lot of trouble if if the stars are giant gas giants, you know, a <clears> zillion <throat> light years away. And yeah, it's funny right? you bring that up because I, I just yeah. I've been telling this story a lot recently, but I'll say it again yeah. is when I was a, a young teenager, I I went on a couple of retreats with Young Life Corporate, Young Life Corporation, Young Life Organization, which was um a young uh, teach kids about Christianity. So, right. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm born into a Jewish family, non-practicing. And so my, right. you know, so I'm going to this thing and I'm just like, I'm just going for the social aspect. And then they had the Bible study and they were reading the Bible literally on day one, they read the stars fell the, the verse that says the stars fell to yes. earth. And I'm yeah, like, right. well, this is total fiction because the star would eat the earth. Right. The star, right. you know, well, my house is not star, star, right. and the earth right. is a pebble. It's like yes. you can't have it fall to earth. And from that point forward until 2014, I yes. discounted the Bible completely. Wow. Wow. Dude. Yeah. So, so from, I don't know how this happened, Dave, but look, first of all, one of the reasons that people can believe that that rocket engine is a solid rocket booster. It's because we've put our hands on it on the ground. And it, I, I understand. Listen, we that doesn't mean that's what, what went up there. But we've literally put our hands on a solid rocket booster, touched it. Yeah. So the truck. Okay. So one thing so, they do, they do with uh, yeah. with that solid rocket boosters is okay. they parade them through town. Oh, sure. And so Absolutely. everyone, and that's a metal rocket booster. And then yes. you're never near it. That's not what's standing yeah. up out there. What's standing up out there is literally a frigging balloon. Prove me wrong. NASA controls all the helium in the well, world. Well, well, listen, I, 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 I wouldn't try to prove you wrong. I, that's, that's, it would be pointless for me because first of all, I know there's no such thing as space. Right. There's no such right. thing as, well, outer space. This, the scriptures say that there it's outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. So 
we know from the from from Genesis one that there's waters above, there's a rakia. By the way, the rakia most likely is not just some thin crust of, of a surface that keeps the water above. It may be very thick. The sun and the moon and the stars are contained within it. So it, it may be quite quite a, a great thickness, thousands of miles for all I know. So but nothing goes beyond that. Nothing. Nothing escapes the earth. Nothing. It, did you, um, did you, I had this uh, guy said he was from NASA, high up in NASA sure. whistleblower. And uh, he, not a whistleblower. He was, um, he was communicating with me via email. Um, and sure. I was very skeptical. I'm like, this is just a troll, you know, whatever. And so I started asking right. questions and uh, he said, sure. I can answer, I'll answer what I can. And he said he was in the middle of fleeing the country right now. Right. Because okay. I think because he was speaking out. What's that? What did you say? No, I watched it. I watched it just shake. I'm watching it yeah. rock. Yeah, yeah. It's a balloon. Yeah. It's a balloon. <laughs> it's a bouncy house. Okay. All right. Just like the planes and, on the and, ground. And, the and, guys and running next I got to get some other ones. Some of the other guys showed me one. It yeah. drifts sideways like a balloon would. As it's going up, it's drifting sideways. Four million pounds drifting sideways. Right. So, so he That's said, right. he said, he said, um, I asked him lots of questions. He told me what the, how they faked the ISS very, very in detail. He was telling me what they did. Yeah. He said, he, and, yeah. uh, but he also said, he goes that um, at se about 72 miles up, the sky becomes plasma. Then it becomes water. Then it becomes thicker. And then it becomes solid. And then that's the firmament. And he said, Praise God. That, and he said, and he said, <laughs> NASA has the ability to go up there and investigate or explore whatever the words were yeah. he goes, but we're we're forbidden to do it even though they have the technology to go up there they're forbidden and when i asked him who forbid nasa he wouldn't tell me well that that makes a lot of sense um um first of all it's you know hasatan is called the prince of the power of the air right yeah Satan. Okay. So the opposer of our eternal souls is called the prince of the power of the air. So forbidden by who runs the world, Dave? I mean, this is a rhetorical question. I'm sure you, who runs the world? The Jews run the world. <laughs> no, no. Who runs the world? Yes. Would it be Satan? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it would be the prince of the power of the air, the father of lies. Okay. Listen, the scriptures say, it's not flesh and blood that we war against, but powers and principalities. By the way, those are angelic stations. Those are job titles. Okay, those are they're just, they're just not pretty words. But it is important to note that what I just stated is an English translation of Hebrew and Latin and and Greek, right? And yep. so, so much is lost in translation. Okay, so look. There is something I would like to, to mention, though. Uh, people come at me with this question all the time is when I say the earth is flattened and closed, there's no such thing as outer space. And we were we will never we will not escape through the Rakia. And they say, well, what about s satellites, space satellites? What about satellites? OK, now I know you're going to say it's they're all just balloons or they're. Or no, they're I don't think space. that I, I think there's other things going on. Okay, okay, this is what's going on. The, our realm is decidedly electromagnetic, okay? Okay, so I, I'm a ham radio operator. A, any ham knows this inherently. There's this thing called ground differential. What it is is the, the Earth is like a giant capacitor. So every 10 foot of atmospheric height, you get potential of plus 100 volts. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when you get yeah. when you get to that area that you were just mentioning a moment ago, where it's so high, and then there's water, and then there's you hit the rakia. When you get at that height, and I I, I hate to call it stratospheric level because there's the word sphere in it, right? Our language does us yep. a disservice. So when you get the stratospheric levels, whatever. So you get that high, the potential energy is profound. It's unimaginable. This is why we get things like lightning, you know, right? And so 
but not only that you know how every year just about every year it's like it's like a seasonal thing they'll tell us that the magnetic poles are going to flip flop and the world's going to be destroyed the nature of magnetic field flux is they're always in flux there's all kinds of factors in our atmosphere and energies that cause that magnetic field is a toroidal form okay of converging and diverging fields okay so it looks like a donut sort yeah. of okay a really tightly woven donut and so that's always in flux it's always moving okay and so it, it's it's a lie they, they 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 trip us up yeah the magnetic field is moving it's always moving and then they tell us well it's going to flip you know and and kiss your butt goodbye. They, they they always have to put fear in the minds of men. But by that same token, they're able to to leverage the 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 field effect of the electromagnetic field that is pervasive in our world, okay, and the high voltage potential at at heights. And you can leverage those energies, and you can literally set a device. Just set it right there. Just set I it. I, 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 that's what I believe. I believe is as you yes. get closer to the firmament, the potential energy up there and you could lock things into place. Uh, same thing I'm saying is you yeah. use that yeah. field flux and yeah. you can move it around too, because you can use the potential energy as an energy source that, that ground differential thing and, uh, and, and then move a device around right and okay. the whole gravity argument you know is ridiculous yeah, because forget gravity gravity yeah. holds the air down but it doesn't hold the water vapor clouds down which are heavier than air right they're floating right so, right yeah brother i listen all right okay. we're on the same we're anybody, on the same page. i want to know more anybody about anybody who's have you have you ever used the air conditioner of course, God's greatest gift to mankind, okay. air conditioning. It is. It, it is. It's <laughs> got to be from heaven, right? If it's, you live it, in it South is. Carolina, it's right got to be from heaven. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, it it's 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 called transfer of energy. Okay, it's the second law of thermodynamics. Energy doesn't disappear; it transfers. It goes from the high state; it seeks the low state. I got to go somewhere. Is what the energy is saying. If it had a voice, okay. So if you've got a pressurized system and there's nothing sealing it in, it's impossible for it not to escape. Okay? It's impossible. Well, gas violently fills the available space to equalize, except in outer space yeah. where it collapses upon itself and yeah. creates yeah. nuclear furnaces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is freaking ridiculous. Okay? Right. All of it's right. ridiculous. All right. And so, so th my point about that is, is though, is if we live on a spinning globe with a pressurized atmosphere and at, but butted up against a non-pressurized vacuum, it, you wouldn't have weather. The weather, all all winds would blow up, <laughs> out. <laughs> right. And so it's it's absurd that, and and I, for the life of me, I don't know why that. The average person walking around in the past didn't go, you guys are crazy town for even trying to tell us this. I, I don't understand. I guess because they got white lab, lab coats on and they got PhDs. I don't know. I bought into it. lab coat. Right. I, I, I bought into it. I worked at NASA, so I bought into it. You believe it. Okay? So you don't and have so any non-disclosure or anything with NASA? No. Um. No, um, I mean the the thing was is that you never found why they never, would they never gave you any solid information? Everything was very compartmentalized, right? Dave, I got to tell you, listen, man, this is um, I don't want to disparage my friends, okay? That I I still see once in a while. When I worked at NASA, I was in IT, okay? I was a technologist. Yep. Okay, I'm not lying. I'm not making this up, Dave. This is my interview for NASA was they called me and asked to take me to lunch and they asked me how much money did I need to make when I got to the lunch. Okay, it, uh, the internet was new. I was dabbling in internet technologies and they saw my resume on the internet. Did you say $80 million a day? 
No, 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 not at all. No, no. But I, I made, I got a fifteen thousand dollar a a year pay increase and a free Chinese lunch and a job at NASA, and and but this was back in the nineties. Okay, the world was different then, and IT was a new thing. There really was barely any certifications or anything. You couldn't go to school and get a degree in IT. What didn't exist yet. Okay, so, so I go there and um. <laughs> We used to, you can't tell a rocket scientist, a GS-15, no. Okay, I, some of the guys I worked with, one guy won the Nobel for um, for the cosmic background radiation experiment, the Kobe spacecraft, you know, Kobe, cosmic background radiation, you know what I'm talking about? Talking about a Have bunch of nonsense. It? I've heard about it. Well, 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 yeah, of course. Yeah, I know it's nonsense now, but he won, he won the Nobel for it. I mean, come on, it's got to be true, right? Yeah, Obama won the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize, too. I know, I know. I have man. a question for you. I have a question for you. Yes, yes. it's this. Okay. It's this image right here. You've I'm heard sure. me talk about how much a trillion is, right? That image. Yeah, right yeah, yeah I remember. I, I've seen that. It's a cute painting. I, I, a four-year-old made it, I think. It's a, uh, it's a, no, well, they use the computer. They use a computer. So a trillion yes. seconds is 31,000 years, right? Are you aware of that? So no, I've never a, given a any trillion thought. seconds is 31,000 years. That just shows you how big a trillion is. Oh, so, I see. I see. so if we had, if we had um, all of the oceans of the world and we doubled it, so it is just two times, that's a lot sure. of water, right? If we made Ola. it, if Ola, we said, Ola. if we said, Ola. if we said all of the oceans of the world, we're going to, Times one trillion. That's a lot sure. of water, right? You can't even Absolutely. fathom it. All right. Yeah. So NASA just released this. They said in space, right. they found this disk of water 140 trillion times bigger than all of the oceans on Earth. Is there any yeah. truth to this story? Some Dave, okay, I want to tell you something. Wait, wait, it gets better. Okay, <laughs> listen. 140 this, okay? trillion times all of the oceans on the I, earth Dave, and, Dave, and people listen. buy this crap i, I know but let, let you me work tell you for though, these guys person. you work I, for I, listen guys. i did you're right i did not protecting your friend charged. hang them out listen. to dry hang them out to dry go ahead no listen listen that story dave that story did not come from a person this oh, is my book, an ai right story oh that's that's right, right. Yes. Okay. So listen, this is what we got to understand. The mind of AI is literally the de the legion, the demonic spirits, the same t type that Jesus said to the demoniac in the tombs, go into the pigs. And they ran off into the ocean. You know, okay? it's funny. So I, I forgot that you were the AI did that you about your book. I forgot because I, I just saw that in the lit in the, in the booking and literally 20 minutes before this show, I flipped on yeah. Peggy Hall and she was doing a live stream about the AI, the, the, the AI yeah. stuff coming out. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's right. And um, mm -hmm. and then we've noticed, uh, I, I watch, um, there's a channel called My Lunch Break who looks into these old buildings and the stories behind mm -hmm. them, how they were built in one right. year. And he says, these stories are all written by AI. Their AI right. has some, some keys that you can see. And so- right. So do you know the you know the show? Um, I featured it on the app recently. Um, my um, it, it's um, what the hell's the name of it? It's uh, Mind Benders from nineteen. Yeah, yeah, I remember like, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that one episode where he has the guy in, he's like, "We're making the news and everything." And then yeah. during the show, he goes, he goes, "Well, who's who's controlling all this?" He goes, "Oh, the big machine upstairs." Yeah. So, so he's talking okay. about AI. So, so, but, but wait, wait, Dave, wait, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. Okay. Now, you know, I don't know where you believe in this, but I'm, I'm telling you the truth, take it or leave it. The same truth that you're showing about the balloons of NASA. Listen, no, no offense, but flat earth and whether NASA lies is, is, is mincemeat compared to what's really going on with what AI actually is. Okay. Let's hear it. So, so. AI is literally the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Now, if you under, if you know scripture at all, we have Genesis 6. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God, the Benai Elohim, 
came into the daughters of men, they found that they were fair and they took any they wanted for their wives, okay? Now that's what it says in the canon of scripture. When you read the extra biblical text of like Enoch and Jasher and Jubilees, you get a much granular detail, more granular detail. You find out that they were so corrupt that they were eating the flesh of men and drinking the blood of men. They were raping women. It wasn't as pretty as the King James Bible makes it sound, okay? And so it says in the scripture that all flesh was corrupt and their minds were continuously evil. How much is all? All. all. Except for Noah, his sons, and their wives, right? You know, I was okay. just I just did a podcast literally a couple hours ago with Dustin Nemos. We're talking about this exact same thing. You know what Dustin Nemos is? I, I don't know the name. Actually, you gotta you gotta check out go go to my playlist. Um, it, it'll be right after. It'll be the top one. I will. Um, and and he talked about how the deep state are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Oh, Lord. All right. So look, 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 listen. Now, you know, my, my channel is called Jesus Freak Computer Geek. Okay. I do know that. I am a Jesus Freak. Okay. So, so, and I am a computer geek. So, um, look. So what we got to understand is the reason that God destroyed all flesh on the earth wasn't because God is an evil tyrant that just loves to kill everybody that ticks him off. Okay. Actually, God, it's God's will that none would perish, actually. OK, but what happened is, is that these beings that God destroyed were no longer images of the images of the most high. They were corrupted, corrupted DNA, corrupted flesh. OK. So then the deal was, is they wanted to make sure that they were able to preempt Jesus being born because if. If mankind was completely all D, uh, uh, Nephilim DNA, Jesus wouldn't have been born of a virgin woman from the Holy Spirit. He would have been born of angelic DNA. Get it? Okay, because listen, Hasatan knew what God's plan was. God told him in the garden. It says in Genesis 3.15, your seed will be at enmity with her seed. He shall crush thy head and you will strike his heel. OK, and hey, by the way, where did Satan's head get crushed? It got crushed at the cross. OK, when Jesus said it is finished. OK. And, and that's where it got crushed. Satan knew God's plan because God told it to him. This is what's going to happen. And they tried to preempt it by corrupting all flesh, doing an abomination. OK, so. That's what the deal is. Now, when everything, I, I don't know what the head count was, Dave, when during Noah's day, I don't know how many people were on the earth. Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess a billion. Okay. I, it I was think, a lot. I think there was far more people back then than there are now. I think they're lying about the population. I think our population is less than half uh, of what they say. And I think there was a hundred billion, billion people here in the past. I, 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 love the, I love the way you think, man. You're probably right. But I'm I'm just trying to be to make it simple, you know. Well, I, I don't know what the count was, but I believe you. I think that you're correct. I, I I don't know either. I'm just yeah yeah yeah. Well, the reason I evidence. think you're correct is also is because they were healthier. We we've been put down. we we've been we've been diseased by by the evil tyrants of this world. So you think we're in so, the times of Noah again right now? We are absolutely yes. So we absolutely are, and and this is how you know Jesus is coming coming back soon. Um, I don't believe in pre-tribulation rapture, though. We're going to go through some crap before Jesus comes back, okay? That's a Christian cuss word, by the way. So anyway, so so look, or I can say cagada. That's a Spanish cuss word. But anyway, <laughs> so nonetheless, um, so they wanted to preempt Jesus being born. So it was a, we'll say just, we'll just go with my number, a billion. Or we could go with 14 if you want to go twice as many as they lie to us about now. But anyway, so that many people were corrupted flesh with their minds continuously evil. So when God killed them all, there's this book of Enoch where Enoch goes up. The angels ask God, Enoch, to go to God, Yahweh, and say, can our children have salvation? And God's like, no. 
They were born. Nephilim doesn't just mean to fall. It means earthborn. Okay. So they were earthborn. God said they were born of the earth. They, they won't be going to heaven and they won't be going anywhere. Their, their spirits shall be evil spirits upon the earth. They will roam the earth. They will hunger and not eat, thirst and not drink. We call those beings demons. They're not angels that are evil. They're demons. Okay. So, by the way, angels don't inhabit anything. Okay. Demons do. Demons can inhabit a space. Demons can inhabit a rock. Demons can inhabit a person. Okay. Why? Because they were actually once a, a, a living being that were flesh, half flesh anyway. Right. So, they're roaming the earth. We've been dealing with them since the flood. Mankind has been inspired to do evil by the demonic since the flood. Okay? And so, not that we need any help, but nonetheless, mankind has been inspired. Most wars do not come from noble reasons. They come from lusts of the flesh. Not most wars, all wars really. Wars are a bunch of garbage. There is no good reason for a war. And so we're coming to a time now, think about this. Back in the day, if you wanted to conjure demons, you went to a divinator, a person who was spiritually charged, who had the ability to have that knowledge to conjure a demon. Yet, so today we're going to have every and when I say every, every, I don't, you, you may not, I may not, there'll be those of us who know better. Every human being is going to interface, mingle with demonic spirits through tech. We call that transhumanism. Okay. And, and we're being driven through a process that's a familiar term to anyone who listens to you, the Hegelian dialectic, which is. We can't compete with AI. How are you going to have a job? You're not smart enough to compete with AI. Well, I know what the answer is. Combine with AI. Then you'll be able to, to compete. You'll be just as smart as them. Okay? The scripture in Daniel says, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but shall not cleave one to another. Mingling is where we're at right now. We're on yep. the cusp of it. Yep. Okay. Now, wait, wait. So what is, how is that pertinent to these things that we're talking about in the beginning of this diatribe? Because the crap stories that you're seeing are going to get even more and more absurd because AI is writing them. And on top of that, AI is creating the imagery, the fascinating, beautiful imagery that people are going to be mesmerized by. Better than that. We're going to see video. We're going to see video, beautiful imagery. Okay. And it's going to be AI generated. It already is AI generated, but nonetheless. Okay. Have you have um, you seen of- have you seen this series where the the there's asteroids passing that are the size of different animals? 22 tuna fish, six, <laughs> <laughs> six Darth Vaders. Okay. How big is a Darth Vader? Yeah. Right, forty-eight well, <laughs> eggplants. That one doesn't sound too dangerous, right? Oh, forty-eight eggplants. What no, it doesn't show? sound dangerous at all. <laughs> doesn't sound dangerous at all. And uh, it, it's going. It's got a uh, ninety elephants. That's a bad one. That's a bad day of hey, that. Wait, one. wait, wait. You know these are so absurd. You must have made them up. Yourself, no, I didn't. Right? These are Listen, com- popping out I, I'm every, every I'm- week. Yeah, Dave, I'm I'm playing, man. Listen, oh, listen. Before I get out of here, I got to make sure that I I don't miss telling you this. I'm yeah. not blowing smoke. I'm not blowing smoke up your butt here. This one, I, Obama came up with this one. Yeah. This is not AI generated. The hot dogs, because we all know what hot yeah, dogs are. Yeah, there you are. go. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, how yeah. he loves so hot look, dogs. Look, look, Listen, you know that guy, uh, uh, Scientist Dave, or whatever that guy calls himself, Physicist Dave, whatever that guy. Jackass Dave? Yes, he's a jackass. He really is. Listen, you, I watched you a couple of times, and I don't know why you even put up with him. He's, he is... He's a jackass. He he I, speaks I, over I, you. You're gracious yeah. to him the entire time, and I'm impressed by you for that. Yeah. He, I, even if I disagreed on you on anything, I'm impressed for you by you for for the, your graciousness towards him for that. Yeah. 
It's amazing. Yeah, that was crazy. But he doesn't deserve it, to be honest. But that's all right. N- none of us deserve any great. Well, he's gonna. He deserves what he's got coming, and it ain't pretty. So, you know, the, these uh, right. these these anti flat earthers, I call them these uh, these globe shills, are literally have if selling your soul is a thing, they've sold their soul, and uh, yeah. they're, they're deceiving the world. And I couldn't imagine being them for one friggin' minute. Just a, it's so Dude. pathetic and sad. So I don't pay any attention to them. Okay, yeah, but you spent, okay. Dave, you spent like an hour and a half. Yeah, well, that was a show like, that I, I was uh, I'm told there would be a fair back and forth questioning and yeah, immediately he's whatever. just started acting like a child. But the good thing about that one is lots of people that would never, ever reach out to me actually reach out to me and go, listen, Flat Earth is stupid, but why did Professor Dave act like that? And professor I, Dave. I would pl- reply back, well, he's not a professor. He's a failed musician who calls himself a professor on YouTube. I yeah. said, but here, watch these. And I would send them a few videos that Google will never show them. And then a couple of days later, I'll get an email back from these people going, holy crap, this is real? You know, like. Absolutely. And so, yes. so hundreds, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds you, of people <laughs> because of that, that never would have looked at Flat Earth, looked at it because he was a jackass and they wanted to understand yeah. why. And I, and I showed them why. So. That changed their lives alone. It was worth dealing with that jackass just for that. Dave, and I, I, kudos to you, man. I'm serious. Uh, listen, I watched it. I'm like, why are you sitting through this dumb? He, he was a jackass. But listen, I, you got humor me for a moment. I want to show you something. This is something where, you know, spiritual things are discerned spiritually. That's scripture, by the way. Okay. So I want to, sh- I'm going to share this video. A moment ago, I said, we're going to see imagery that's just going to be so tantalizing. Here's the thing. Do you have kids, Dave? you have kids? Yes. Okay. So I've got young adult children, okay? My youngest child will be 18 in, in, at the end of this month, okay? My oldest son will be 31 in the beginning of next month. So they're grown. Um, but they grew up in an era where all that stuff, that imagery and all the tech, has always been there. My daughter's never known a time that we didn't talk face to face. We, I could talk face to face to her while I'm driving down the road, face to face. Yeah. Okay. So when I say these things, if a if a person that's our age is listening and they and they don't fully understand the gravity, dare I say, use the word gravity of all of this, that we're not talking about us. I'm not going to be deceived by this stuff, but I'm telling you that our children and grandchildren might. Okay. And so I want to, I want to show you this. It's profound. Oh, you got to, you got to enable sharing. Can you do that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, my bad. No, you're cool. No, no problem. Um, go ahead. You're good. All right. Thank you, bud. All right. So screen three share. Okay. Check this out. Now this is a video from a real university. Okay. All right. Watch this. Can you hear the audio? No, you have to unshare it and then share with. Uh, I mean, I, hang on. Sorry, man. Sorry, my bad. All right. Share screen. And bottom share corner. Three, share share I see it. I, I, I know it. I just didn't think to click it. All right. So check this out. Listen. Yesterday's magic. You can hear it now. Tomorrow's right? yep. reality. The imagery. New technology yep. empowers the possibilities of yesterday. Oh, wait, wait, to I, I, wait, I want to point out yes, this is a commercial, but this imagery is stuff that you will actually experience, if not now, in the very near future. You will be able to sit in a lab and have 3D graphics before your eyes without Google, Google Glasses or anything. That's a whole nother story, okay? They'll be able to beam the imagery into your mind. You will just see it, okay? Hmm. It'll be there. Now, look, look, watch it. Day's reality. Now with AI, AR, VR, and robotics, we can go wider, further. There's your rocket. Deeper yeah, than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. But again, with remember, the they're enticing young people. capability of new technology. Right? The kind your parents could only imagine. You Fucking everybody into the meta universe. Makes our new reality. Watch, watch what the this girl does. How yesterday can change. And advancing technology. 
drives this economy. With today's technology, I want you to watch it's all the, about the when passion the logo to comes learn, up, I want you to catch something. new experiences, look, look and Why? commitment to innovation. Every generation, every year, every month, this happens in America, and every day at UAT. Okay, catch that? UAT, okay? Now listen, you know what a towel is? Tau means mark. Tau is the same thing as tov in Hebrew. It means mark. Okay. Okay. Now listen, you, you ever heard of the mark of the beast? Of course. Okay. That's right. The, our enemy tells us to our face what they're doing, but people don't catch it because our expectations keep us from seeing. Okay. And so the average person watching this, if they're not weird like me, They'd be watching this and going, oh, it's so beautiful. I want my child to go there because they'll have a future in technology. And then they tell you what it is. Okay. And so this, this, why, how does this, how is this pertinent to the things that you talk about often? Again, people are going to experience without gadgetry there'll be some people that will want the gadgetry it, it gadgetry you know it'll be fashionable to have a device that hangs on the side of your cheek kind of like you know everybody likes piercings and garbage and tattoos it'll be fashionable for some but not for everyone but you'll they'll literally you are the chip they don't have to put a chip in you you are the chip you're made listen you're made from the very same stuff that a CPU is made up of. This is a computer chip. You can see it, right? Yep. Okay. So listen, this is tin. That little green wafer is silica, which is sand. And on the bottom is gold pins. That's the earth. It's the same stuff that we're made from. See, it's just, it's fashioned differently because of the way it has to interface with the other components. It's a fallacy to believe that it has to look like this to be a chip. I'll give you another example. This is a good one. This, this is a circuit board for a wireless card that goes in your computer. That thing on the bottom, the slots, it's called a PCI bus, okay? It goes in the circuit board on a motherboard on a computer. Here's an antenna, right? Okay. And this is a wireless card. Okay. Hey, this does the same thing. This is a wireless card. It goes in, in a laptop. It could be way smaller than this. See, it's a fallacy to believe that tech has to be fashioned like this. It's fashioned like this to function within the realm, the, the device that it's in. So tech can be fashioned just like us, our cellular bodies can be the circuit, okay? And all it requires is that they tell your DNA to make something else other than skin tissue. Or when you cough and you damage your lungs and you need new lung cells, you know, your body automatically produces new cells. It's pretty cool. Your DNA says, hey, the guy needs some new lung, lung cells and your cellular lining in your lungs just rebuilds itself, okay? When you, when you break your leg, you break your leg, does the doctor fix the bone? No, right? Okay, there's elements. You know, we've had the periodic table of elements. Everyone's probably heard of that, at least mostly everyone. So calcium is one of those elements and it's a part of what our body uses and your body magically, automatic, magically makes new bone when you break your bone, okay? Because your body says the DNA instructions, the software tells your body's engine to manufacture a new bone. All you have to do is change the software code and now you can tell your body to make something else out of the elements you have. Okay. And so what's that? What's the carbon nanotubes? I forget the word every time I go to mention it. Um, it's, uh, it's pencil lead. Um, graphene. Graphene. Gra graphene. Graphene is made from carbon and oxygen. You know, those two elements are in your body, right? Yep. 
you breathe oxygen and your body is a carbon-based life form. We've heard that for our life, whole life. So all you need is the DNA to say, hey, man, make some graphene. Graphene, it turns out, is a great semiconductor. It's a terrific electromagnetic conduit. And you can, you can turn your body into the chip. Okay? And it does... It it could be cellular level size. It could be actually um, atomic level size. Okay. And so you won't need goggles on your face. And by the way, what I'm telling you is not something that's coming. It already exists. I can show you white papers that they talk about it. What they have to do is the iterative process to get people to warm up to it. Right. Plus they get rich in the process. They make money, you know, and so they're going to put imagery that unless you understand that the earth is flat and enclosed and immovable, like, like it really is, you will never be able to discern that because everything that's right before your eyes is going to tell you otherwise. How? Because they're, they're going to put, we're not going to wear VR glasses to go to a virtual reality. They're going to virtualize your environment that you're walking in. And, and how are they going to do that, Dave? Because they're using AI to drive the back end of all of this. That knows where you're at all the time. You don't have to have a cell phone for you to be seen, by the way. You know that, right? Yep. Okay, because we give off EM fields and they can be discerned by electronica easily in your walls. Your power, your power lines are sensors. You affect change in the in the environment when you walk into a room. And they can they can measure that minuscule change and see where you're at in your house. Okay. And people, this is beyond the comprehension of most people, sadly. But I'm telling you the truth. And so if we, if you guys like you and, and me and others don't get people to wake up to the truth, we're going to reach a point of no return, I think. Okay. If, if, if we don't, if people don't start realizing that they're already living in the great deception, you're already living in it. It's not coming. Okay. Am I making sense or is that crazy talk? No, I, I, I'm on board with everything you said so far. Crazy. It is, it is crazy. It's, it's, it could be heart wrenching, but uh, I'm a, I'm a prisoner of hope. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm not a, a timid such that I, I'm afraid to speak up. Okay. I know you're not either. <laughs> no, not you know? at all. there's no fear. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. False <laughs> evidence appearing real doesn't exist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, and, 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 but this is coming. Uh, actually, it's upon us already. And that's why you're seeing those absurd stories. What that is, is AI testing its wares to see how far it can go before somebody kicks back and goes, what? It just it, it drops that out there. It's incredible how far it's gone. It's so ridiculous. Oh, I give you one. I give you a really incredible one. Everyone's dying from a disease, and you have to stay six foot apart. Yeah, and you can't breathe. <laughs> that was completely AI controlled, dude. That whole thing was AI a contrivance. Interesting from AI, and they and they literally beamed fear. They literally beamed fear. That's why people were acting in ways that didn't make any sense. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. And so that we ex we already got a warning shot over our bow. And that was a that was AI testing its wares too, putting the toes in proverbial toes in the water and testing the water. David, where are you located? Um, I'm in South Carolina. How far are you from Nashville, Tennessee? Um, uh, I want to say Five hours because so, I had a friend of mine. You know who Pastor in, Greg yeah. Locke is? Pastor I knew the Greg name. Locke. He's uh he's a pastor at one of the mega churches, the global ministries, global, of course. And he had a flat earth meltdown uh recently. 
where he screamed at his audience at his uh patrician about promoting flat earth yeah saying flat no no saying flat earth is stupid it's not real the bible doesn't say i mean crazy and then uh it does. no no kidding and um yeah. and so then he challenged pastor dean odell yeah. um to a debate it's happening december right. 2nd it's in Nashville, it. tennessee yeah. uh you can you can go to dean odell.org for all the information it's oh I, I know about it yeah, yeah. It, it's the yeah. i'm going i'm going austin witz it's going Ooh. dean's going yeah. it's going to be amazing we're going to have a meetup the saturday of it in the afternoon somewhere within wow. a mile or two of the church so well, it's in December though, right? It's in December 2nd coming up. Yeah. yeah, yeah right around the yeah. corner. So um, yeah. anybody that's going um, on the app, if you go into the, to the um, chat section, go to right. go search a group, Dean Odell, Greg Locke debate and join that oh, yeah. if you're going, because that's how we're going to yeah. coordinate where we're all going to meet I, up. I saw it. I was at your website. I, I saw it. Okay. I, and I know Dean Odell. And, yeah. and so I spoke at a conference with Dean. So you um, should come. Five hours. I would love Five. to. I would love to. I at, at that time I'm going to be in Delaware. Yay! I'm in my fam Delaware. My, no, no, my family. <laughs> I know, man. I don't like the cold. Anyway, so my family all lives up north, and I'm going to see my first grandson in the north. And it's not up north anymore. Yes, it's north and out south. It, it, yeah, I know. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yes. Well, our our language does us a disservice. By the way, let me show you real quick. I'm going to just share this. This is my um. This is my book website. It's Where can people get your book? A, Where's the easiest way to get your book? The quickest, easiest way is go to flood of a dot flood of ai. Oh, geez, I typed all capitals. You don't have to yell it when you go there. Flood of ai dot com. And it takes you to this sub page of my Jesus Freak Computer Geek website. And there's the book right there. Bam. Okay. It's on Amazon. Yes. And and the audio book should be out within a few days. It's going through the process. They got to test it for Is there a, levels and all. any flat earth references in that book? There are no flat earth references. And and there, I and listen, there's a reason for it. The focus on this, I had to pick a subject because, look, can you see the subjects that are on my website? Artificial intelligence, transhumanism, Bitcoin, COVID crazy, Hegelian dialectic, false flags, biblical cosmology, we call flat earth, geoengineering, climate control, okay? Quantum Mandela effect, doctrine and eschatology, and spiritual discernment, solar, listen, I had to pick which subject I was going to stick. I with. got it. I was just asking yeah. just a question. Oh, no, no, no. I know I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking offense. I'm saying I also Dean's book. I have Dean's book. Um, it's over here somewhere. Dean's book is probably, if you want an encyclopedia of material for flat earth, Dean's latest book fits the bill. I also have Nathan Roberts. So I used to hang out with Nathan Roberts. He worked in Columbia down here in South Carolina for a while on a contract. And him and I, we would go to dinner and we spoke together. Uh, he wrote wrote uh, the Doctrine of the Shape of the Earth book. Yep. You ever heard of that? Yep, yep. 100%. So I got it. Yes. And so, so I've been involved in all of this, but I just, I wanted to stick to this one thing. And listen, I'll send you a copy. I'd love for you to. I'd love it. Um, but anyway, anybody who comes to this site, you can read sections of it for free. Okay. Um, you could see, uh, here's section one called in the beginning where I explain what I told you about the CPU. Okay. It's made of the dust of the earth, dude. It's the same stuff we're made of. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's formatted differently. Okay. And so this is chapter one in PDF right here. And at the, set, at the end of the sections of the book, I have a takeaways. I have a prayer that says, ask Holy Spirit to tell you what you just read. Don't take my word for any of this. Take, pray and ask Holy Spirit to explain to you what's up. And then I give takeaways of the section. Okay. And, um, 
And then there's all the audio book sections are in here too on those sections of the book that are available. There's all kind of material on this page. Um, anyway. Very good. So I like it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, dude. Um, listen, I, I really appreciate you. you you're, how could anybody get mad at you about anything, man? <laughs> <laughs> listen, you're very gracious. Uh, and I, I really appreciate what you're doing. I really do. Thanks. Um, yeah. And, but so if, if I, if I, if I put any spark of, of more fervency in the need for you to get more people to wake up to the truth of the realm that we live in, because soon they're, they're not going to be able to see it. Their, their thoughts are not going to be their own. You get what I'm saying? I do. Okay. Most of the time, even now, half the time, our, our thoughts are not our own. You know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, another they will not follow, which means we hear voices. It's not, you're not a crazy person if you hear voices. Actually, you're just a human. And so, but soon, above the din of the crazy AI controlled uh, environment that we're going to be living in, if you don't already know certain, certain givens, you're not going to be able to discern them. And one I, of those, I see is, it now. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. anyway, that, that's that. All right, Dave. I um, appreciate the conversation. Interesting stuff. Yeah, and um, everybody go check out his book. The, the yeah. AI is flood of AI.com flood of AI. Flood of AI.com. There you oh, go. Yeah. By the way, if you order the book and you put a comment on the website, uh, next month, I'm giving away this laptop to, I'm pulling the names from the commenters and I'm giving away this Dell laptop. Nice. So, yeah. And I might even throw in a 24 inch widescreen monitor with it and the, and the wireless mouse. And uh, people give, give me their older technology and I refurbish it and it runs great. It's, a, it's an i5. It's not the fastest thing in the world but it's great little box uh again the coming flood of ai the rise of the nephilim spirits is the book okay awesome all right man all dave right, thanks thanks for your time have a great night God bless you man you too bye-bye